Hey guys! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Legit Street Cars. My name is Alex, and in this video, we are doing exactly what the title says. I haven't written it yet, but it's something along the lines of modifying my E55, my see through or lightweight E55 wagon, and then testing its zero to 60 time, or retesting it, in fact, because we did this when the car was fully intact and it went zero to 60 in only 3.8 seconds. So I wanna see if it's faster in its new lightweight form uh, and with a couple more little modifications. Now, more importantly than all of that is I'm giving away something today that's pretty awesome. It is an air intake system for the M113K. It fits any AMG car with this supercharged engine. And all you gotta do is of course, like the video, like you do all the videos, subscribe to the channel. I'm sure everyone watching is subscribed. And then head over to Instagram and follow me at Legit Streetcars and follow VRP Speed as well. And on my post that I made right now of this very video, it's a post stating, hey, there's a video on my channel, just comment followed, and I'm gonna pick a random winner from that Instagram post. So at Legit Streetcars, at VRP Speed, and without further ado, let's get to modifying the wagon. Now, if you guys plan on increasing the boost pressure on any supercharged or turbocharged engine, you wanna think about increasing the efficiency of your intercooler system. With increased boost pressure comes higher intake air temperatures, which can lead to a reduction in power and possible engine damaging detonation. The M113K engine uses a water to air intercooler, and unfortunately, it's sandwiched in between the engine and the supercharger, so it gets really hot. The intercooler depends on a cool mix of water and coolant flowing through it to reduce the temperature of the boosted air running through its external fins. So where does our intercooler get this magical cooled off mixture of water and coolant? Well, it's from this guy right here, our front mount heat exchanger. And this works just like a radiator in the sense that it dissipates heat. So you have a pump here, it pumps the warm fluid from the intercooler into the heat exchanger and then the air from the road flows through this, cools that liquid off and then it's pumped right back into the intercooler. So of course, if you want cooler water for longer, for longer pulls, you wanna increase the efficiency of this heat exchanger, and that's exactly what we're doing. If your E55 is missing this additional engine oil cooler, don't worry, it was added sometime in 2004, and this needs to be transferred to the new heat exchanger. Removing the factory heat exchanger is pretty simple. You just have two clips. I already loose dumped the other one. You pry from the bottom, and then go like this, down, and she is out. Okay, it's not totally out. I like to lay the heat exchanger this way. That way, we don't make a big mess of all the coolant. And all you have here are two hoses. All right, second hose coming off. And that's it. We barely lose any coolant at all. Here is the old heat exchanger. Filled with coolant, though. I'll have to empty this out. Let's see. Oh, yeah. And here is the difference between our factory heat exchanger that is leaking apparently, and our new much larger one. So obviously this is gonna cool down our water and coolant mixture a lot better. And what's really cool is it's a direct bolt on. Check this out. So anytime you can get away with using factory bracketry to mount anything, do it. So in this case, we're using the mounts for the factory crash bar. And there, we just put these through the bolts like so and get your nuts ready that's a good idea got to have your nuts ready okay this is spinning great stay aha just a little bit will do okay cool okay so i've transferred the factory grommets to the aftermarket brackets a little bit of loctite on the bolts and it's installed. And our factory oil cooler should slide right in. All right, there's that. A couple more bolts on this side. We'll be good to go. And this is what I call a perfect installation. This is an excellent kit, and I'll definitely link it down below. It's from Victory Road Performance. There'll be a coupon code down there as well to save you some money, but this is so nice. This is how you mount a heat exchanger to a car using the factory bolts. There's a little Loctite here, and then the factory oil cooler even uses the factory bolts. Everything is rock solid. 
perfectly center. This is awesome. Uh, so next up, we are swapping out uh, an already aftermarket pump. This is a Johnson CM30. It's an okay pump, but we can do much better. So let's get this thing out of here and our new pump installed and all connected. Well, there's no good angle at these bolts and the screw is totally rusted. So unfortunately, we gotta cut this bracket out. <laughs> Helps if you turn the air on. Yep, air helps. I want to do this very gently because this pump is still good. Someone could use it. Don't want to cut right through it. There we go. Okay, great. Now I can get a way better angle at the bolt there and there. It was this screw in the middle that I couldn't turn at all to loosen it up to get the pump out. All right, there goes the old bracket. Okay, so I had to drill out this mounting clamp so it would fit over this factory stud. So our pump is gonna be held in like so. All right, with the pump mounted, I have secured all the hoses and clamps so we are completely connected. And I did have to use a piece of three quarter inch heater hose for the bottom port of the heat exchanger to the pump. So this is what the flow looks like. You have the hot water coming off the intercooler into the top port of the heat exchanger. Then that hot water gets cooled through all of the fins and it gets sucked up by the pump here and sent out right through this factory hose to the other port on the intercooler. So that's it. We have a loop like this. It makes that exact noise. Now we've added a much more powerful intercooler pump, which is gonna pull more amperage. For this, I wanna run a larger 14 gauge power wire. I also wanna run a completely dedicated circuit so that this pump runs anytime the engine is running. Since we want the fuse cover to fit back on like factory, I poked a hole in the rubber grommet and fed in my new power wire. The pump is designed for constant use, so it'll still give me many years of service. And for a clean install, I like using these add a circuit fuse taps. And after you crimp it to the new power wire, you just install the original 40 amp fuse in the lower slot and a 15 amp fuse for our newly added circuit. Plug it back in and this is our finished product. After installing the factory fuse cover, only you and I will know that anything's been done. With the power wire ran all the way to our pump harness, we can solder two wires together. A little goes a long way. We have our ground as well and you never want to melt solder on top of the wire. You want to heat it up from the bottom and it will get in there just fine. Now you want to use some heat shrink to protect the wiring. That way it's not open to the elements. And you can just heat this up with a lighter. I like to start in the middle right at the joint. Slowly go outwards. And just like that, we have two very well connected and protected solder joints. Okay, the wiring is all done. Everything is hooked up. Everything's mounted. We're ready to bleed the system and move on. But I know there is a big elephant in the room. Alex, how is it that you look so good, so fresh and so clean like the song after filming all day? I mean, you're wearing the same clothes. It's gotta be the same day, right? No, 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 it's not. I, uh, I just reuse the same clothes. I film these videos sometimes two, three days. I was at the auction a couple days ago, filmed this in the morning, went to work, filmed it again, filmed it now again in the morning. I shower in between, but I put on the same dirty old clothes. So it kind of looks like it's the same day, but it's not. Now you know. The other big elephant in the room is why did I use a black wire for power? The reason is simple. If you're running one single wire in a black engine compartment and it's red, it's gonna stick out. As much as you tuck it in, you're gonna see it pointing out in areas like this. Our black wire is in here, you can't see it. It is completely camouflaged. It's ran underneath this box and then I ran it actually through, right, oh, oh, you can't see it, it's right there. Okay, it's right there. Only you guys can see this. If I run into you at a car meet and you point that out, I'm gonna pretend to not know what you're talking about, all right? <laughs> but overall, it is completely hidden. Oh, there it is again. But you get the idea. It's black, it blends in. If you look at it like this, a few feet away, there is no wiring at all. Another thing, I ran the ground right down there to a factory ground that you probably can't see because I don't have professional lighting. Anyway, it's right there so we didn't have to drill anything. Anytime you can use a factory ground, that is a positive. Okay, so I've been slowly adding coolant to the system. We were down quite a bit. 
And to finish this all off, all you're doing is bleeding all of the air out of the intercooler system. And Mercedes gives you a factory bleed port. It's right here on the top line coming off the intercooler. It normally has this little plug on there. You take that off, hook up a hose, and just run it right to the coolant reservoir. I can already hear the pump moving some fluid around, so we should see something come out of this hose any second now. And this is exactly what you wanna see. It might be milky in the beginning, but after you let the pump run for a few minutes, it will clear up. And a little tip, actually a huge tip, fill up the heat exchanger before you install it. So you can actually flip it over and fill it up. Uh, you don't have to go all the way, but that really helps with the bleeding process. I did that, except I forgot to hit record on the camera because I'm a professional. Next, we're removing the factory intake system. Start by removing the air intake tubes, and don't be surprised if you find one that's torn. A torn intake tube will allow hot air to be ingested by the engine, and that'll reduce power. With the factory intake removed, we'll start assembling our custom VRP intake, starting with the Y section that connects to the throttle body. This kit has an adapter to fit many different size throttle bodies, so it'll work on stock and modified cars. The kit is pretty easy to install and just requires you to connect the tubes with silicone couplers and clamps. But the secret behind the intake are these super turboy intake velocity charging boosters that add at least 50 horsepower. Okay, they're just contained high flow air filters, and the reality is the intake won't add any horsepower to your car at all. Fact is, the factory intake has proven itself even with heavily modified M113K cars, and the intake is just for looks. And there she is, our custom intake system on the wagon. Now, you may have noticed that some things are missing, like for example, some clamps, and maybe a coupler that's been replaced with duct tape. It's because I've had this kit for a little while and I honestly can't find some of the pieces. I may or may not have used them on other projects, but don't worry. Whoever wins this will get a complete kit from Victory Road Performance. Now I'm gonna repeat it again. These do not add any power, they are for looks, and we're gonna find out if they're for sound. A lot of guys post up videos of these things sounding pretty mean. You hear a lot of the blower whine when it's under load, so we're gonna find out. I know that a lot of those guys also have fixed pulleys and bigger throttle bodies, but let's find out if this makes any more noise than factory. And before we rip it to 60, we gotta bolt on our drag radials. Just at the gas station, putting it back to the level it was at when we did the other test. And this is pretty ridiculous. A lot of stairs, a lot of stairs. Drag radial in the back, see-through station wagon, looking pretty. Okay, so a couple of things. You may have noticed that I didn't do the popular split cooling mod uh, from the factory. The factory radiator for the car shares the same reservoir as the intercooler system, which kind of doesn't make any sense because the hot engine coolant would mix with the intercooler system. Anyway, there's been some debate on splitting that system if it actually reduces temperature, especially if you're not adding a big tank. I don't plan on adding a big tank on this car to fill with water and ice. I just don't think I'm gonna go that far with the wagon as I did with the sedan, at least I'm saying that now. Who knows, next year it'll probably have like a Whipple supercharger on it. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I have the split cooling mod, uh, I have the kit, so I want to monitor the intake air temperatures myself, see if it actually makes a difference. Uh, and if it does, I'll put it on. It's very easy to do, even with all the panels on the car. So anyway, with that said, we have the exact same amount of fuel as we did during the last test, it's at zero to 60 in 3.8 seconds. So let's see what she's got. Oh, we are spinning. That is not gonna be good. I gotta say, the blower whine is way more noticeable now. Oh my gosh, that is crazy. Uh, 4.8, I mean, we basically did a burnout off the line, so it is much slower, but that doesn't count. It felt really good. Now, I will say this, the cooling modifications that I did in this video, they're not gonna make a huge difference today in zero to 60. Those modifications uh, benefit you more during a really long pull where you're getting heat soaked, and today's actually kind of a cool day. It's very similar to the day uh, that we tested it before. So anyway, let me see if I can redo that, get some better traction. Test two. Nope. <laughs> That's 60. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it sounds much cooler. 4.7, man, uh, it's one of those days. I'm gonna try kind of uh, 
a more gentle launch. I'm not gonna stall it up as much, see what happens. A little better? <laughs> That's 60. Uh, 4.29, we're getting better. Let's try it again, let's try it again, see if we can dip into the threes. Come on, wagon. 60. 4.5. All right, you guys know I can't stop. I gotta try this again. This test though, I'm, I'm not, it's not fair, okay? It is, it's not as sunny as it was the day I tested it before. All right, so give the wagon a break. All right, I'm gonna try comfort mode. It'll start off in second. This thing's a beast. It is just ripping them no matter what. 4.5, 4.5, no good. didn't punch it as quickly off the line. And we're at 4.0, 4.0, almost into the threes. Let's do it again. Now this is a great time to have an upgraded cooling system. These back-to-back -back pulls are definitely heating things up, but it doesn't feel like we're losing any power at all, mainly because of that larger heat exchanger and the pump. All right, laid into it real nice. Three point nine. We're at three point nine. We've dipped into the threes with a super, super soft launch. So we're not giving it full power like we were before. I don't think it'll dip any lower than that. But we hit three point eight last time. We're at three point nine. A little handicapped right now. So it's definitely not going any slower. I'm going to be a force to be reckoned with off the line after this. No, no, no. I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm just going to do burnouts. Come on, baby. It felt good. This cooling system is awesome. This thing hasn't lost any power at all. I've done this a bunch of times. And we're at 3.8. We are at 3.8 seconds. So we have matched what we did before, okay? So we didn't beat it, although I think that we would have uh, if we got some traction. I'm babying it off the line, whereas in the last video, I was going full power. Let's see if you guys can hear the whine. Yeah, it is much, much louder, definitely. I think with the larger throttle body, uh, it would get even louder than that. And my sedan with the fixed 72 millimeter supercharger pulley is an absolute monster. The wine that comes out of that thing is awesome. There's a guy over there taking a leak in the force preserve. That's pretty interesting. Uh, anyway, guys, I'm a little disappointed in 3.8. I was really hoping to show you guys like a 3.5 to 60, and I think the wagon has it. Okay, there's a bus coming. Yep, all the force preserves are closed, so I'm filming in a bus turnaround. All right, there you go. All right, anyway, we're going vlog style, guys. I'm disappointed it did 3.8. I know that's really, really fast. I wanted to show you guys that it could do it in 3.5 seconds. I don't remember if I already said that I might have. But you know, I'm gonna test this again for sure before I put all the panels on. We'll rip it to 60 again when it's a little bit sunnier out and we can get some traction. And I'm pretty sure we can go 3.5. I've said that like 10 times. Anyway, guys, this video is over. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up button, share the video, subscribe if you're new, follow me on Instagram, win that intake. Have an awesome day. I'll catch all of you in the next video. It pumps the hot water and coolant mixture through the heat exchanger, and then the airflow from the road cools off that liquid with all these little fins that are in, inside of this. And they are finny, and they do fin stuff. All right, I'm making this all up, guys. Nothing is scripted. Nothing, but I had to put this bolt back. <laughs>